Okay, terrific. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Okay, terrific. Uh, 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 greetings. It's so good to, to be here and to, and to see you all. Uh, I'd like to start, of course, by welcoming all of our graduates, uh, also uh, all their friends and family, and also UI philosophy uh, faculty and staff uh, who are here. Uh, it's great to see everybody. Uh, my name is David Cunning. I'm chair of the Iowa Philosophy Department. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here with all of you today to congratulate our wonderful students and now graduates and also their parents and loved ones for whom this is a very uh, special moment as well. Uh, let me start just by recognizing the, the Iowa philosophy faculty who are here, just because I, I imagine their name, maybe their names have come up in some context, uh, arguing about a view that students have taken home. <laughs> and so I can uh, just introduce everyone who's here. Uh, so um, you guys can wave maybe when I mention your names. Uh, Professor Asha Bandari. Professor Bandari. Uh, Professor Richard Fummerton. Professor uh, Greg Landini. Uh, Professor Diane Jeske, uh, Professor jo Jovana uh, Davidovich, Professor David Stern, uh, Professor Ali Hassan, and Professor Kerry Swanson. And I, let's see, I think for the moment that's all the faculty, but some other folks might. I, uh, might pop in. Uh, uh, so let me start uh, to our graduates. Um, we're just so honored to have had all of you as students, to have, to have had all of you as our students um, in classes with us uh, and in office hours and other discussions. Uh, you guys have been relentless <laughs> in examining views and arguments, pointing out problems, in many cases, very serious problems with, with those views and arguments. And also coming up with creative solutions that help to resuscitate the views and arguments so that they or an improved version of them can stand on firmer ground. Uh, you guys are really good at doing all of these things. You critically identify problems, problems that others without your skill and expertise would fail to notice, problems that run the risk of being unseen. This kind of activity has been valuable in terms of addressing the perennial questions of philosophy, which of course are super interesting and super fun in their own right. But you'll also be taking your skills out into the world to make a difference. I sometimes joke that I nominate my colleagues in the philosophy department to serve on important university committees, just because I want there to be at least one philosopher in the room <laughs> anytime a consequential decision is being made. And I say the same to all of you. We're so excited to see our graduates go out into the world and use their analytical and creative skills to be difference makers, whether it's in medicine, law, business, public health, the military, the media, K through 12 education, or indeed any sector that they inhabit. We have seen what you can do and we're excited for what you have ahead of you. You will try and you will succeed and you'll fail and you'll be resilient and you'll try again 
and big things will happen uh, for each of you as you set your own course. Let me conclude these initial comments by mentioning a new tradition that we're starting in the philosophy department this year, where each student selects a book that will then be placed in the EPB philosophy library with an inscription that recognizes the student's graduation. Some of the books are overtly philosophical and some are just outstanding books. Uh, each student has selected a book that is important to them and with which they identify. Yeah, here is a sample of the titles. I wasn't able to get all the titles yet from students because I know there's still a lot of final exams going on and, and some are going to get back to me later. But this is just a sample. Uh, it's just a coincidence that this is first, even though it's suspicious because it's one of my favorites. Uh, Spinoza's Ethics, Treatise on Emendation of the Intellect and Selected Letters. Uh, Entangled Empathy by Lori Gruen. The New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration and the Age of Colorblindness by Michelle Alexander. Alamo Theory by Josh Bell. Dune by Frank Herbert. The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. Volume One of Naruto by Masashi Kishimoto. And uh, Anne of Green Gables by Lucy Maud Montgomery. These are all wonderful, wonderful titles. We'll be proud to have them in our library with an inscription for each student. Uh, the last thing I'll mention uh, in these initial comments is that we're very excited to see you graduate, but we'd also love for you to keep in touch. Uh, we're also happy to serve as a resource in any way that we can. I say that on behalf of all of my colleagues because I know that it's true. Uh, so let's start. Uh, the next item on our program is uh, to acknowledge the recipients of the Gustav Bergman Award for Outstanding Undergraduate Student in Philosophy. Uh, this year we have uh, two recipients of the award, uh, uh, Tobias uh, Garcia Vega and Kate Lones. Uh, can you guys uh, wave and, and say hello? <laughs> <So> wave. <laughs> Wonderful, and Tobias, I'm sorry, I'm trying to just, great, move my screen around. Uh, um, so we have two recipients this year, Kate and Tobias, both did really outstanding work and were involved in the department in all kinds of ways with the undergraduate colloquium and, and many other events and, and did outstanding work. Uh, Kate and Tobias will each be receiving a framed certificate from the department and also a financial award. We will be hearing more about Kate and Tobias during the recognition of honors thesis in a little bit. We also wanted to mention uh, a Fulbright Award. Now this of course is not a departmental award. It's more like a international award, maybe a galaxy level award. It's a really big deal. Uh, uh, Maya Mahajan has received this award. Uh, Maya, can you uh, wave? Uh, uh, Maya will be moving to Spain for a year as a Fulbright English teaching assistant in the Canary Islands. She'll teach elementary school students and also volunteer with organizations supporting immigrants and refugees in her spare time. Congratulations. Uh, next, we have a couple of distinguished alumna speakers. Uh, the first alumna speaker is uh, Sam Gerleman. Uh, let me do a brief introduction. Uh, Sam is originally from Des Moines, Iowa and graduated from the University of Iowa in 2016 with majors in philosophy sociology and ethics and public policy. She then attended Stanford Law School where she focused on a variety of social justice issues, including disability rights, reproductive rights and immigrants, immigrants rights. She is currently an attorney and Stanford Law Fellow at Disability, disability Rights Maryland in Baltimore where she primarily represents youth with high needs developmental and mental health concerns. Over the past few years, she has held many mentorship and leadership positions and is happy to provide whatever help she can to anyone considering law school or the legal profession. Uh, and we've invited uh, Sam to uh, speak for a little bit about uh, her experience since graduation. Sam. Great, well, that was such a kind introduction. Thank you, David. It's so good to see all the faces that I recognize, professors from years past, and to everyone else I don't know, congratulations. I'm really happy for you and your graduation, and I'm really glad the department to try to give you some sort of means in which to celebrate and be collegial and see other people in doing it, it's certainly in an odd time. So David had asked me to speak for a little bit and send some words of encouragement your way. So in trying to figure out what to say, I thought back to both my graduating from college four years ago 
and also just what I've been trying to tell myself generally to keep sane and healthy and, and productive right now. So hopefully some of this resonates and if not, that's okay too. If there's anything I can be helpful with, like David said, I, I really like to be helpful. You can email me or reach out to me and, and we'll figure it out. But I guess the first thing I want to say is it's okay and healthy if you don't know what you're doing right now. And if you can just sit and be happy that you've reached this huge milestone. I think that when I graduated from college, I was very determined that then I was on a very specific path and any deviation from that path was problematic. And I think that being a few years out has made me recognize that the journey, as cliche as it is, is really important and it's really worthwhile. You're going to make decisions and calls right now that are going to tell you a lot about who you are and, and what you want to be. And that doesn't mean that they have to be done in an artful or elegant way, living and trying to figure out what to do next and reflecting can be enough. And I think that it's really difficult right now in particular to figure out that, you know, we're still growing and there's still opportunities right now to really be in perspective and use some of the skills that you spent the past four years picking up to do something that feels important and meaningful to you. So I guess the second thing I would say is it's a really great time to reflect on your priorities and try to figure out what makes you a healthy and happy human overall. You've spent four years being critical of a bunch of stuff, maybe yourself in the process. Hopefully, if you have been, it's been in a kind and loving way. And if not, I hope in the future it's in a kind and loving way. But this is a really great opportunity for you to be able to connect with family that you normally wouldn't talk to or professors you haven't seen in four years or other folks and be able to really just you know, it's dig down and figure out what feels good for you right now. I know a lot of folks aren't privileged enough to be able to have the space to do a lot of reflection right now. And if you're in that camp, I would commend you and ask to reach out to help or ask for help for whoever you may need it from. But I think it's super, super important to focus on what you're thinking about in your life right now, what makes you anxious, what makes you happy, what makes you overjoyed or stressed, and figure out how that can fuel you and figure out whatever next step sounds good to you. And I think lastly, it's important to be kind and gentle with yourself right now. You've done something incredibly huge and without the conventional graduation celebration, it's a little difficult to really feel like you've done it. Um, so do whatever you can, run a lap around your backyard. I don't know, Skype with more people after this or Zoom, Skype I guess is obsolete at this point. Um, but that's just to say, do things that make you feel happy and, and grateful for where you are at this point. It's, it's huge and you really should take time to be proud and happy for yourself. So that's all I have to say, but congrats and I'm so happy for all of you. Thank you so much, Sam. <laughs> uh, our next distinguished alumnus speaker is Tessa Albright. Um, Tessa graduated in 2014 with a double major in philosophy and Japanese studies. After graduation, she moved to Tokyo, Japan, where she first worked at a, where she first worked at a publishing company as an editor and project manager of corporate history books. After a couple of years of working in editing and translation, Tessa changed careers and entered the field of public relations at Deloitte, Japan, where she currently works. As a, media, as a media coordinator for Deloitte, Tessa's work mainly consists of writing press releases, organizing press conferences, and scheduling media interviews. And we've invited Tessa to uh, speak for a little bit about uh, some of her experience. Uh, Tessa. Hi, everyone. And thank you, Professor Cunning, for that uh, introduction. Um, I'm so happy to be here today. Um, congratulations, first of all, to the graduates. I know this is a really weird time. and a lot of it probably doesn't feel very real right now because everything's on Zoom and online and you can't really see each other and actually celebrate this moment. But I was hoping that today um, I could kind of give you guys some words of, or words of encouragement and um, Professor Cunning mentioned to me that um, he hoped that I could kind of um, inspire you guys and um, kind of talk about how I went um, into a field that's outside of philosophy and how um, philosophy has really helped me in fields that um, don't necessarily um, relate directly to philosophy. Um, so like the introduction that Professor Cunning just um, spoke about, um, I went into publishing originally and right now I work in PR and I've really found that both of those um, fields have 
really, really benefited from my background in philosophy. And I just want to uh, go back to when I was graduating about five, six years ago and how I had no idea what I wanted to do. <laughs> and a lot of people ask me, what are you going to do with a philosophy major? And I said, well, I don't know yet. <laughs> and at the time, I had a job lined up um, that actually, unfortunately, fell through. Uh, about a week before graduation, and I was in total panic mode. Um, and I had no jobs lined up, no interviews lined up at the time of graduation, and I felt really, really at a loss, um, and I didn't know where I was headed. Um, but Fortunately, five years later, things worked out, and I seem to be doing okay, or I feel that way. And uh, I've really learned through um, these past five years that even though I didn't initially realize that philosophy really benefited me in um, a lot of the aspects of my profession, it's really helped, especially with critical analysis and problem solving, I mean, those are skills that are necessary in any field. And when I mentioned to some of my colleagues that I majored in philosophy, um, it seems to really make sense to them. And um, they feel as though that my problem solving skills are pretty ahead compared to some of my other colleagues, perhaps my own age. And I really believe that's um, credited to my educational background in philosophy. And I didn't realize it at the time, but um, right now it feels like uh, I really just kind of, it's all resonated and um, it shows in my profession and my career right now. And um, I hope today that through speaking with you guys, I could maybe inspire you that um, even in unconventional, unconventional routes, you can still use philosophy in a way and utilize your skills to benefit you and further you in your career. And there's a lot of options out there and you can use a lot of the things that you've learned. Um, and I found one thing I found is that job interviews are really, really easy compared to class discussions that um, have happened in philosophy. So I've never stumbled on a job interview yet. So <laughs> that's one thing that I definitely feel like I really benefited from philosophy as well. Um, if anyone out there is kind of worried about where they're headed or they don't know what to do, I'm not sure if I can be of any help, but I'd love to listen and, and maybe just chat. And if you have any worries or concerns or just want somebody to talk to that's kind of been through it, um, I'm definitely here. And I just want to say you guys are doing great. Um, you've already accomplished so much with graduating and it's really a huge accomplishment that you guys have done. So really, really congratulations. And I know you're going to move on to do great things. So I hope that helps. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Tessa and Sam. Uh, I really appreciated that the, the comments that you both made. Uh, and I, I just want to uh, reiterate uh, from some of the comments uh, to, to highlight that uh, to our graduates, you guys really have some some tremendous skills. So one of the ways, and you may not even know this, right, because sometimes you're in class with people who have the same skills, and so it just seems normal. But, but one way that I know the faculty recognize this is that we'll sometimes be teaching a class with a lot of philosophy students, and someone will, will, will take a class who's not a philosophy major who hasn't had a, cl a class, and they'll be pretty silent the first couple of meetings, and then they'll, often, they'll come to us and they'll say, you know, what was that? Or what were those people doing? <laughs> I don't know how to do that. Uh, or there's just this kind of exhaustive analysis of views and a, a, a way to re reconstruct views and, and, and critique them and come up with constructive solutions to problems. This is really a valuable skill and it, and it, and it transfers into so many different arenas in the, in the, in the medical world of its diagnoses, in the legal world, in the business world, uh, to have a skill of being able to uh, get a sense of the lay of the land and what all the different options are to approaching a problem uh, and coming up with a solution quickly. These are tremendous uh, assets. And so I, 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 I'm very excited for all of you as you're, as you're moving forward. Um, um, thank you, Tessa and, and Sam, for your comments. Wonderful. <clears throat> um, so the next item on the, uh, on the program is honors thesis recognition. Um, we have uh, uh, four students to, to recognize this year, and what we'll do is uh, have each of the faculty uh, supervisors uh, say a little bit about, about the student after we 
have to rename them. Uh, the first student is uh, Tobias Garcia Vega, and the faculty supervisor for his honors thesis was Professor Bandaro. Yes, so um, Tobias wrote uh, an honors thesis titled Saving Rawlsian Selfhood Toward a Sociohistorical Theory of Selves in John Rawls's Theory of Justice. And he conducted about a year of additional research, which included research in critical race theory to ultimately argue that um, our lived experiences can't be ignored in an account of selfhood and to argue that that account of selfhood is compatible with, you know, um, one of our sort of main political philosophers, one of the leading political philosophers, theory of justice, John Rawls. So congratulations, Tobias. It was a, a very thorough thesis, an excellent thesis, and um, I wish you the, the best as you move on to the next stage. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, congratulations, Tobias. Uh, uh, the next student is Kate Lawrence, who did a, an honors thesis with the supervisor, uh, Professor Landini. Well, I would like to say that uh, the Kate was uh, really one of the best honors thesis students, uh, we can put it that way, that I've had in a very long time. Um, she was absolutely excellent, excellent, hard worker, worked by herself. She wrote on an extremely difficult topic, <laughs> which is quantum theory and the so-called quantum handshake theory. She said some interesting new things about it. I feel like I even learned a little bit uh, from the thesis itself. She um, really deserves a great uh, round of applause for how much work she did on that and how and and what a great writer she is in trying to express very complicated ideas like that. So. Uh, very hearty congratulations goes out to Kate. I don't, I don't see her. Is she joined us with oh, us? Yeah, you can scroll onto another uh, screen if you can. Okay, super. So Kate, I, I'm not seeing you right now, but congratulations and um, absolutely wonderful. Please keep in touch with me. Maybe you can teach me some more about quantum theory one day. <laughs> Way to go, congratulations, Kate. Uh, next student is uh, Maya Mahajan and uh, her, Honors thesis supervisor was Professor uh, Davidovich. Hi, um, I had a great privilege of, of advising Maya's uh, honors thesis. Um, so Maya wrote her honors thesis on immigration and children's rights and really combined sort of the most, in my mind, beautiful aspects of doing really careful philosophy with practical analysis and dealing with real life issues. And so, um, it was also really interesting because uh, it was really unique. When Maya and I worked together, we had another honors stu uh, student working with us, Alex Sladek, and the sort of exchanges between the three of us made it my favorite uh, ever honors, uh, advi uh, honors uh, advising. Um, I think it's also really interesting that Maya is uh, going for her Fulbright to Spain, and one of the volunteer things she will be doing is also working with the immigrants and refugees. So I'm, I'm very proud of you. I loved working with you, and congratulations. Congratulations, Maya. Uh, the next uh, honors thesis uh, writer is uh, Charles Schott, and the thesis supervisor was Professor Jeske. Uh, yes, um, Charles wrote um, an excellent thesis. Um, he initially wanted to write on physician-assisted suicide, and as he and I worked our way through the literature, we realized that it was striking how seldom this issue was put in the larger context to the rationality and morality of suicide as such. And so he opened the project out, and I think it was a good example of how a philosophical examination of an issue can shed a light, can shed light on what's pertinent, um, what needs to be examined in an issue of um, pressing social importance. It's a very clearly written um, thesis. It laid out the issues very clearly. And I think he did an excellent job. I also I really enjoy working with Charles because I don't think I had him in a class before. I say that because he may have been in one of my big lecture classes. <laughs> um, and so I really got to know him and um, I really enjoyed our conversations. So um, I'm very proud of the work he did and um, I really enjoyed getting to know him. Congratulations, Charles. 
Uh, so Tobias, Kate, Maya, and Charles all defended their theses very successfully and are graduating with honors. Um, so ne next on our program, let's make sure I have that all right, okay, is uh, to, uh, to um, um, recognize all, all of our graduates. Uh, and we have, uh, we have two programs in the philosophy department. We have a philosophy uh, major and, a, and an ethics and public policy major. So we'll, we'll uh, recognize students from both of those uh, majors. And what I'll do is uh, read each student's name. And if, uh, if that student could uh, just uh, wave and we can do a little applause for the student after we read their name, uh, that, would be, that would be very nice. Um, the first student is Lauren Dahl. Hi, Lauren, there you go. Congratulations. Next student is Rachel Edelman. Way to go, Rachel. Congratulations. Uh, next student is Amy Evans. Hi, Amy. Way to go. Congratulations. And then uh, Tobias Garcia Vega. Congratulations, Tobias. Uh, Rana Hawezi. Saw Rana there. Yes, congratulations, Rana. Uh, Christopher Jones. Congratulations, Christopher. Uh, Kate Lones. Congratulations, Kate. Uh, Maya Mahajan. Uh, Jeremiah Moody. Jeremiah, are you here today? I think he said he was going to try to come. I'm not sure he's here, but we'll congratulate him for sure. Uh, M. Peterson, M. I saw you there. It's so good to see you. I know you're not in Iowa City now. So good to see you. Congratulations, M. Uh, Serena Kamea. Congratulations, Serena. Way to go. Charles Schott. Already heard of. Congratulations, Charles. Gavin Thayer. Congratulations, Gavin. <laughs> Congratulations. You're, you're traveling. <laughs> and you thought you might not be able to make it, but you are here. Wonderful. <laughs> Ava, could you scroll on the program? Oh, you bet. Thank you. I will thank you. you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Diane. Uh, and then uh, Emily Ward. Emily, congratulations, Emily. Way to go. Actually wanted to recognize our uh, graduating students in the ethics and public policy major. Uh, the first is uh, Alexis Mahana. Congratulations, Alexis. Um, Mackenzie Doughton. Congratulations, Mackenzie. Uh, Maya Mahajan again. So Maya was a double major in philosophy and ethics and public policy. So way to go, Maya. Uh, um, Zainab Amusamaki. Congratulations. Way to go. Uh, Nicole Nucaro. Congratulations, Nicole. And then Javon Stovall. I think I saw Javon. Congratulations, Javon. Wonderful. So I, I, I did, I know students were busy and not everybody had a chance to get back to me, uh, but I, uh, I, I did want to list a few of the go goals and achievements of some of our, uh, some of our students. Um, uh, so uh, uh, Lauren Dahl uh, will continue working at UIHC uh, during her gap year and then apply to medical school for fall 2021 and pursue an MD or a DO degree, along with a master's degree in bioethics. So that's great, Lauren. Um, Mackenzie Doughton will be taking a gap year and then applying to law school. Uh, Rana Hawezi will be attending medical school in the fall. She's still deciding between a couple of really good options. Uh, while, sim while simultaneously pursuing a master's degree in bioethics, an, I, an Iowa ICRU fellow for two years. Her writing has been published in the anthology We the Interwoven, and she was a recipient of the Charles and Mary Austin Fund Scholarship 
and the Iowa Chapbook Prize at the University of Iowa through the Majid Center for Undergraduate Writing. And last summer, she was selected for an internship at St. Jude's, uh, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital to do astrovirus research. Uh, she's also been awarded membership into Phi Beta Kappa. Uh, congratulations, Yolanda. Uh, Chris Jones will be attending law school in the fall and is still deciding between a couple of exciting options. Uh, uh, Kate Loans is doing a gap year before, before applying to PhD programs in philosophy with the goal of being a professor at the collegiate level. Uh, this semester, Kate actually competed, completed two separate undergraduate honors theses, uh, one for each of her majors, philosophy and English and creative writing. And, she, and they weren't overlapping. It wasn't like she did a quantum mechanics thing for us and then a liter you know, English literature on quantum mechanics. <laughs> she did two different theses and it's a, a ton of work uh, and she did great on both. Uh, she's received the Bergman Award for Outstanding Undergraduate Student in Philosophy, and she's also been awarded membership into Phi Beta Kappa. Uh, Maya Mahajan, again, will be moving to Spain for a year as a Fulbright English teaching assistant in the Canary Islands. After returning to the United States, she intends to attend law school and practice immigration law at a nonprofit in Northern California. Alexis Mahana has received the UI Stanley Award for International Research and is graduating with university honors. She's planning to move out to Boston to work for a few years as an immigration advocate, then we'll come back to school for a master's or a PhD in an area in public health or human rights. Uh, Zainab Musamaki will be gaining some work experience for a year and then applying to law school. Uh, Serena Kamea has been awarded membership into Phi Beta Kappa. She will be starting at the University of Iowa Law School this coming fall. Uh, congratulations, Serena. Uh, Charles Schott has been awarded membership into Phi Beta Kappa. He'll be working a remote internship this summer uh, using Zoom, I, I think, uh, at a law firm based in South Carolina, writing articles about current events and cases in law and uploading them to a pre-law database for students. He will also be working for Canvas over the summer as well as preparing to take the LSAT. Emily Ward has been awarded membership into Phi Beta Kappa. She will be starting at Marquette University Law School in the fall. Congratulations, Emily. Our graduates are off to do amazing things. Uh, some are going directly to medical school, law school, or graduate school. Some are diving into valuable work experience that will be the start of an engaged and focused trajectory. Uh, let me just say again, we've all seen what you can do and we're excited for what you have ahead of you. You will try and succeed and fail and try be resilient and try again, but big things will happen for each of you as you set your own course. And again, we, we always want to we'll be here as a resource as well. We want you to keep in touch. Uh, let us now conclude by once again congratulating all of our graduates and giving them a huge uh, round of applause. Maybe people could turn off their mute buttons and we can, <laughs> we can make a... <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Such an honor to have you guys in our department. Congratulations. Congratulations, everybody. Um, I am going to, uh, I, I did record this in case anybody uh, wasn't able to be here or if there's a relative or someone else who would like to uh, view the, the uh, graduation ceremony, uh, please just email me and I will send you a link uh, to the event. Um, Thanks so much. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Bye. Congratulations again. Don't be strangers. Drop by. <laughs> Thanks for organizing this, David. Great job. Oh, yeah, thank you for being here. It's, it's just it's so good to see everybody. Thanks, guys. Hi. Thank you. Bye-bye. Congratulations, bye. all. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Good luck, graduates.